I would like to uh, just step back a little and tell you something about the industry's commitment to uh, uh, environmentally progressive performance, to meeting that sustainability criteria, and reducing the environmental impact. And uh, it's signified here with uh, what I show on the screen is a uh, aviation industry commitment to action on climate change, which was signed in Geneva uh, in May of this year by uh, parties all across the industry, airlines, airports, air traffic management organizations, and manufacturers, uh, including Boeing and Rolls-Royce. So the commitment is at the industry level, uh, supported by individual actions by all the various parties like uh, we're doing today. More particularly on fuel, uh, there's also an, an industry commitment to sustainability. Uh, something uh, that we did this year as well was to start something called the Sustainable Aviation Fuel Users Group. And uh, uh, proud to say that Air New Zealand is one of the founding members of that group. Uh, and uh, the idea here is to recognize that uh, uh, we have to meet the sustainability criteria uh, with the uh, endorsement of a variety of stakeholders involved in that process. So we're embarking on that journey as well. Uh, we work with feedstocks, uh, various ones, uh, and, and we expect uh, there will be a variety of feedstocks and fuel processes going forward and address concerns about CO2 emissions and uh, availability and cost has, has been mentioned before. Now, just to illustrate the CO2 life cycle concept a little further for you, uh, on one side of the chart here you see petroleum uh, based kind of life cycle and uh, this, is, uh, this is like drawing from your savings account. We have this energy that's been stored in the, sequestered in the ground for millions of years and we, we keep drawing from the savings account and using that for today's energy needs. Well, what we're trying to create is a, a second option and that's to use our, our current income. That is, we, we grow plants that actually recycle CO2 in near term to when we're actually using that to create energy. So it's a savings account versus your current income. And I don't know about you, but I try to stick with my current income. That works out best. What kind of feedstocks are we talking about here? Four of them are, are illustrated here. Jatropha, which is uh, the, the feedstock uh, used in today's uh, fuel uh, in the flight today. Uh, halophytes have been mentioned. Uh, camelina is an energy crop. And, uh, and algae is uh, maybe a little further out in terms of availability, but uh, has great potential in terms of a very high volume, uh, high energy uh, source. And we think there'll be a portfolio of uh, feedstocks and processes around the world. So we're here to prove that sustainable biofuels have equal energy content and they can meet all the requirements to, uh, to be useful in jets, that they, they can be used in the existing aviation infrastructure as true drop-in fuels, and sustainable, scalable, and affordable. So we know we're on a journey. We're at the beginning of that journey, but we're, as Air New Zealand says, taking steps today for tomorrow. Now, in addition to changing the fuel, uh, as been mentioned before, is, is part of a, you know, the other piece of it is to use fuel more efficiently. So that's doing things like the perfect flight that Air New Zealand recently did to, to actually do flight procedures that optimize uh, the use of the fuel and continued fleet renewal and upgrades. So being very precious about how we use the fuel and then what we're embarking on today is to fundamentally change the fuel. So this is a, where the industry is headed and uh, we're very proud to be part of, of uh, Air New Zealand's flight today. Thank you.